Greetings, fanboys and fangirls. Jared here with another review from Fanboys Forever. Today, we're going to be having a look at something that was uh, pretty unexpected when it was announced. It is the X-Men Transformers crossover, Ultimate Expanse. And boy, oh boy, uh, this is, talk about a fusion of two things that I truly love, X-Men and Transformers. It's not something I really would have thought of, but as soon as it was announced and shown off, I was pretty excited. So let's go ahead and look at the packaging. Usually I don't give much attention to packaging in my reviews, but this will definitely be an exception to that rule because that's definitely part of the fun with this product right here. We have this incredible looking, almost uh, Toy Biz-esque packaging. It got all the orange and kind of blue that we remember from those old boxes. And the font just looks perfect. And we almost have some like anime type of art for the robot expanse, which uh, turns into the Blackbird here. And then up here, we have a little uh, denotation about how that's a uh, collabor collaboration between the two. Computer renders of the robot, a bit of X-Men. On the sides, we have more of the art. And on this side, we actually have some funny kind of animated series art. It certainly fits the bill. And here's the back of the box. You can see that we just get a shot of the robot and the minifigures. And then this close-up shot of Wolverine, which is quite misleading uh, compared to the actual paint apps you get, but still... Here's the barcode and the number in case that helps anybody out. So without further ado, let's crack this guy open. All right, friends, and here we have Expanse out of the packaging, and he is in Blackbird Jet Mode. And for those that are uninitiated, the Blackbird is the main vehicle of the X-Men team. They ride around in that all through the animated series and, of course, all through the comics. Let's go ahead and take just a quick look at the two minifigures that you get. We'll start with old Sabretooth right here. And this is really cool. There's actually a lot of really nice little sculpted detail in this. The paintwork, which is definitely not meant to be uh, viewed this close up, is actually fairly decent for what it is. You get a little uh, brown around the top of the head and the main stripe in the chest and then the gloves. And that's pretty much it for the paintwork. The rest of it pretty well sells the idea of 90s saber tooth just from a distance. And it actually looks pretty convincing for what it's supposed to be. It also stands very easily. Wolverine here is really cool as well. He is not hardly as um, intricately painted or as precisely painted as the original promo shots would have you believe. Those were computer-generated renders. And we all know that renders kind of lie about what's possible with something at this scale. And uh, you're not, you know, you don't get like the V shape on the mask up here. It kind of cuts off early and it's just all black. The mouth, uh, it's kind of ill-defined with paint. But I do appreciate at least that they made an attempt to do some kind of flesh tone for the mouth. And not just yellow, like the arms, which shouldn't be. If we take one of our Micro Masters, which is the smallest uh, line of Transformers you can get right now. And you can see that Wolverine is significantly smaller. Matter of fact, he's about half the size because he's crouched down. So you can definitely tell just the kind of precise detailing they're trying to get into this thing. And you know what? I think this might be a really fun project to actually go in with maybe my... Uh, magnifying lens and some of the fine point brushes I bought recently and go in and maybe customize this thing to give it the uh, super detailed paint job that it deserves because I really do think the sculpting is there. So if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments and it might be something fun to live stream and then do an edited video of. Wolverine, even in this minuscule scale, is still slightly too large for the size of cockpit that they're going here. Say for instance, right here, there's no way. Wolverine should be about half the size that he is. But the truth is, if he was any smaller than this, I mean, I you couldn't see him, and it would be pretty much a worthless gesture. So I do appreciate that we got these guys. Looking at Expanse himself in Blackbird mode, uh, there's certainly a lot of familiarity here if you're a big Transformers fan and you're a regular Transformers buyer, because you know, as well as I do, that most of this is reuse from Studio Series Jetfire. Now I'm going to bring it out for a comparison so that you can see for yourself. Get ready, because this is going to be a very helpful comparison. <laughs> I never have taken apart my uh, Jetfire from Optimus Prime. It's just kind of the way it stays in my display. And I was trying to get this video out pretty quick, but you get the idea. I really like some of the color detailing they have. I like the front here. It's very accurate to the animated series and the comics. Moving on down the fuselage. We have these really cool yellow vents, and I think that really sells that 90s kind of color scheme and aesthetic. We have these sort of floppy wings right here, and they're a little too floppy for my taste. 
they kind of barely hang on if you put them like this. But if you bring them up, they do a lot better. But to have them in this mode, they barely kind of stay like that. But putting them like that's a little bit more palatable. Same for this one over here. You can kind of do that and get it a little bit better. Also, around the back, you can see that this is where the thrusters would be. It would have been nice if the backs of these thrusters were actually painted yellow. I think that would have varied it up and made it a little more interesting. Finally, on the underside, we can basically see uh, what's going to be the robot. So you can see the trunks down here. And I do appreciate that they at least kind of have the chest to where it's opened up to where you can't necessarily tell. So I do appreciate that. We also have some landing gear that is retractable. And the bottom of the cockpit actually has an opening down here, which I suppose is meant for the good of the light piping so that light can come through right here. Uh, at the top, we do have some little black sections like this. And those, I believe, are a remnant of the original tooling that was on the Studio Series Jetfire. I also really like the X logos right here that appear to be uh, some kind of applications, but they're not stickers or anything. All right, guys, let's go ahead and transform them. And to do that, we're going to use these cool instructions. And I really like it when they spring for some sort of color other than black and white. I do like the red and yellow on this. First thing you'll want to do is take the landing gear and we're just going to pop it right up into here. Take these pieces of landing gear and we're going to put them down. Just take these two side rockets and kind of pull them off a little bit. We take the shell portions that's right here and we just flip those up and like that. Next up, we'll take the fronts of these rockets and flip them to the side so it'll be like that. And we're once again going to lift panels off. It's these right here. We're just going to lift that off to the side and lift the other as well. And next up, we're going to actually take these bottom portions of the rocket and lift them off to the side like this. Like that. We're going to turn it around this way and we're going to take these and pretty much just flex them out like this. So we're just extending the leg portions. So when you're done, you'll have a monstrosity that looks like this. So the next thing you'll do is split these panels off right here. So you'll take the top portion and that will come off. So you'll basically pull these up and pull this one down to reveal this. And the same thing over here. You're going to want to take the top portions and reverse them around like this. And the same thing over here. The bottom portions will reverse in the same way. So we just take this and spin it around. So essentially you're just splitting those to get clearance. You'll take this bottom leg like this. You can see that there's a joint there that goes back like that. And it kind of folds together. Same thing over here. There's a little joint in there. And you just pull down and it just kind of folds back in on itself to make the leg. You want to take this panel down here and fold it over. It will tab in right there, and it should get pretty snug. It's kind of to keep this part secured. Same thing on the other side. You just bring that down, and you put it right into the peg. Bring this part, put it in, peg it, and then down here, same way. And then peg it in. And next, you'll just want to readjust the legs. These are pretty tight on these joints. There's a couple of different sides here. You have this one with a larger screw head. And then at the bottom, you kind of have the smaller. I'd rather have the smaller sticking through. So I'll put it to that position. And same on the other side. Bring that down. And take the legs and adjust them to where those thruster portions almost look like the knee pads now. I always like to stop and marvel at the monstrosity of a half-transformed transformer. Looks like a giant sword. <laughs> Next up, you're going to bring it down. I'm actually going to take these two sections right here, and you're just going to split them apart. And it takes a little pulling to get these tabs out, but you can see that you just pull it off to the sides. And to do that, I kind of had to flex this back to release these pegs. And then for this back assembly back here, you pop it up like that. So we just pull. And just like on a Studio Series Jetfire, we end up with two kind of wings here. And with that, we pull this assembly up, and it ends up looking like he has a satellite up here. And we bring these down like this. 
We then take the back portion here and we just kind of unpeg it from the back. Doing that frees up Expanse's arms to be brought down like this. And then we can turn those to adjust them. Bring down the hands just like so. And on the same on this side. And we just twist those to the front facing position. We need to take these tabs right here, fold them like this so that they're a little more flush to the arm. Once you do that, you should be able to tab it in. Same over here. Turn that around like that. Tabs into the arm. Next up, we'll bring the chest assembly down. And you do that just by pulling it outwards, collapsing it down to below the head. And it will peg into place. And we bring the X logo down. So make sure your shoulder assemblies are actually pointing out like this. Get this out of the way a little bit. And we're going to bring this down. And then we take this middle portion. You can see there's a hinge right there. We just bring it up like this. And this means that we should be able to collapse this more flat against the back. You can see that there is a peg hole right here. And it goes against this. So what you'll want to do with this bottom portion, have the wings out a little bit. And you can see that there is a joint right there. And then it actually collapses down a little bit more. This can then be brought up from these hinges. We pull it up. And we bring the wings out a little bit. There's two little pegs on the inside there. You want to make sure they go into those little holes down there to secure the backpack a little bit more flush. And here he is, all complete, that super robot expanse. This is the kind of thing I almost would have expected to have seen them break out in the Pride of the X-Men pilot that never got picked up for series. I mean, look at this. Absolutely gorgeous. They might as well have called this 90s The Robot, right? Is that Jim Lee under there? Nope, Ultra Magnus's cousin. Okay. It has such a great look to it and is certainly indicative of that era of the X-Men. And I definitely think that uh, this is a nostalgic treat when you start looking at all of the design and the color and everything else. Um, certainly, he looks like an unsung, maybe, member of the X-Men from the 90s Jim Lee era. He also comes with some pretty cool accessories. This robot is sort of meant to be an amalgamation, I suppose, of Wolverine and Cyclops. You can see that the design elements, in my opinion, much more favor Cyclops than they do Wolverine, but there are elements of both there. One of them are these cool claws, and they're just made out of energy. And you just have this right here, and you can peg it into the top of the hand. And now he has claws like Wolverine. Want a piece of fruit? Deep reference, deep reference. He comes with an optic blast, only I guess it's a gauntlet blast because it's coming out of the hand. We'll just pop that in real quick, and there we go. So he can kind of have a mix of powers happening all at once. And he also comes with this, which when I first looked at it in the box, to me this looks exactly like uh, what Psylocke gets around her face. It's almost a butterfly shape. So I think that's really cool. It almost makes you want to try to put it over the head, but it doesn't really work in any kind of meaningful way. Instead, it's meant to be kind of an energy effect that would go around one of the many figures. So you just fit it around the waist like that. At least that's what it shows. You can do that with Sabretooth as well. It also shows in the instructions that you are able to take Sabretooth and Wolverine, and if you so desire, you can just pop them up here. And they can have the ride of their lives. Now, this does raise kind of a funny question for me. Is Sabretooth like riding along, or is he and Wolverine just fighting on top of this thing? Uh, of course, Sabretooth isn't always a villain in the X-Men comics, so that's certainly something. But it almost might have made more sense to have included Cyclops, since it does appear that this is an amalgamation of Wolverine and Cyclops. So that's certainly something to think about. In terms of articulation, he can do all the things that you would expect for a more premium Transformer. For one, we'll count this as articulation, but the visor can pop up, and he kind of has a very G1 robot face. He reminds me very much of Overlord. And then the shoulders here, you have plenty of range, and a lot of this is due to transformation. We have a single-jointed elbow right there. We do have a bicep swivel right there. We also have a swivel at the wrist. At the waist, there isn't any kind of swivel at the top, but at the bottom there is, so it alleviates the need for it at the top. He also gets a little bit of a jiggle, almost, 
Uh, it's not really meaningful like locking articulation, but you can certainly position him a little like this. He can do the splits just as wide as you would like because most Transformers can, thanks to transformation stuff. He can also go up and way over 90 degrees. You can also get a single joint right here, but it is a ratchet joint that goes very deep, so that's certainly not a problem. And on down, we do get a ankle joint. You do get this kind of heel that's one of the thrusters, and you can pivot it back and forth. So that means that it is possible to achieve wide stances. It was also possible to take the two energy effects and to pop them onto the top of the Blackbird jet mode. So that's something you can do as well. So let's do a scale comparison just very quickly. Here is Jetfire Prime, like I kind of jokingly shown earlier. You can see that he really is quite large because even with Prime and all of his regalia here, he's still quite a bit shorter. We'll go ahead and just because I have him handy, we'll take a Mezco figure, Krig 13, and you can see that he is significantly shorter. Here we have the new Hot Rod that they've done for the 86 Studio Series, and you can see that he is pretty much dwarfed by this guy. So he is much larger than I was expecting. I actually thought he would be more like a Voyager class, but he's certainly a leader class, which uh, helps justify that price tag, which we'll get to in a minute. Right over here, we do have Ectotron, which is the only other crossover transformer that I own, the Ghostbusters crossover. Really, Expanse is much larger than even Prime. So really, I think that he's a substantially sized figure. So the review has pretty much been a love fest on Expanse so far, but let's get around to some of the things that could have been improved. Uh, one of the things is the most fiddly bits of all on this Transformer are the kind of wings back here, and they just kind of do whatever they want. That's why I kind of, even though they're supposed to be like this, I don't like that much because they wobble, so I keep them locked back here. This one is even worse. It won't even lock at all back there, and it does all kinds of weird things. I do have kind of a strange solution. All you have to do is take these off and reverse them, kind of put them in the wrong orientation. And what that does is it makes it much more snug, and you can even see the X as it's turned around that way. The other thing that was sort of an issue, and it's really more of just the figure in the production itself, it's not just my sample, it's kind of just an overall thing, is the visor itself, where it's been welded together, is kind of uneven right there. But that appears to be something that is just an element of the production of this figure. Even the official images that Hasbro shown had that, so it doesn't bother me too much knowing that, well, that's just kind of the way it is. With a little bit of paint work, you could probably decrease the appearance of that by adding a little red to the bottom where the side is a little too far down. Overall, though, from a distance, it's actually fairly hard to tell about that. So I think we've got a great combination of really flexible articulation, really uh, solid design work, and actually incredibly substantial size, which helps justify the $65 price tag on this guy which was quite a bit more than I'd expected. But then again, I had no idea that he would actually be this large and this substantial. In many ways, I feel like I'm handling kind of an older Transformer from years gone by when the size was uh, much more significant. Thank you so much, my friends, for joining me for this special look at the new Expanse crossover Transformer. So guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it so much. Of course, we would really love it if you could subscribe to the channel. We're growing all the time here on Fanboys Forever, so that really helps us. And of course, hitting that like button helps us as well. Share this video with all your friends and on any of your groups. And of course, God bless you and yours. Be safe out there, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out. Hey, fanboys and fangirls. It's me, your favorite old Canuck, Wolverine. And this is my little buddy. Hi, you all. It's me, little bloomin' Wolverine. And I'm here to give you a message. I don't know why he has the accent he does, but what he's saying is important, so listen up, bub. I think you will all subscribe. It's the thing that daddy would want. That's right. Good job, Junior. Well, you heard the kid. Go ahead and subscribe. Yeah, go ahead and subscribe, love. You want a piece of fruit?